Get out your pacemakers, inhalers, and defibrillators again because the Cardiac Cavaliers were back in business this afternoon. The Cavs have made it a habit all season long of winning close games in the final minutes. And of course, today, they'd stick to the trend against the defending ACC champion Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Virginia playing in front of a sellout crowd at Scott Stadium. The Hoos have won two of their last three games by one point. Wake Forest will take the early 3-0 lead off a field goal. On the ensuing kickoff, Josh Zeidenberg makes the most of his fifth career return. He takes it from the one and off 55 yards. The second longest return for the Hoos this season. Cavs would tie it at three with a field goal. Second quarter, Ryan Wigand's punt is blocked. It would be downed on the Cavaliers 30. The Deeks answer with a field goal. They take the 6-3 lead as former Cavalier and Wake Forest head coach Jim Grove looks for his seventh win in a row. Wake looking to take a six-point lead. Sam Swank kicking from 43 yards out. Doink! It hits the goalpost. No good. Those missed points would make a difference later. Ten seconds left in the half. Cavs still trailing. Sewell finds Maurice Covington. Covington gives the stiff arm and he's gone to the house for his first career touchdown. A 39-yard connection. Cavaliers take the 10-6 halftime lead. Third quarter, Wake Forest quarterback Riley Skinner throws towards the sidelines. Razai Dowling is there for the interception. The true freshman also had a pick last week against NC State. The Cavs drive down to the 19-yard line on fourth and two. Algro elects to go for it. Instead of kick the field goal, Sewell has Jonathan Stupar wide open but overthrows the tight end. The Cavaliers fail to capitalize off the turnover. So Wake Forest marches 81 yards back down the field. Skinner with plenty of time looking end zone fires a bullet to Kenneth Moore. Deeks take the 13-10 lead. They'd add another field goal to climb up 6, 16-10. So the Cavaliers now in crunch time and in a situation oh so familiar to them. Four minutes to go on the Wake 24-yard line. Fourth and two. Sewell to Covington again. First down so the Cavaliers are still alive. Three plays later, it goes to Michael Simpson into the end zone from one yard out. Cavaliers take the 17-16 lead, but Wake Forest is given two minutes to work with. Their first play, Skinner chased from behind by Chris Long, taken down for the big sack. Defense in good shape. However, on fourth down for Wake, Skinner finds D'Angelo Bryant. The Deacons pick up the first town. They get in the field goal range with two seconds left. It's do or die for Wake Forest, but the 47-yarder is wide right. The Cavaliers survive again, beat the defending ACC champs 17 to 16. The final score, it's the Cavs' first win over a ranked team since 2005. It's also their fifth win this season by two points or less. That sets an NCAA record. One of our directives or whatever you want to call it uh, coming into the game was got to be ready to play a 60-minute game, not 59-30. Uh, in this particular case, not 59-58. Uh, because these two teams over the last two years have had law, more last-minute finishes than any other two teams in the conference. I think our defense stepped up tremendously. I think a couple times we were putting situations in the red zone and uh, guys just stepped up and made plays. And, I mean, that's what we ask from guys on this defense, to make plays and, and be disruptive. And, and, I'm, and like I said, I'm just happy that we were able to come out with a win today. It just kind of comes naturally to us in crunch time. Uh, we just do enough things to win. Um, so we, that was a great team we beat today, and uh, we're, we're happy about it, and hats off to them. You could say it's all in the genes. His dad played professional soccer, and his older brother is a kicker for the Chicago Bears. So it's no wonder Chris Gold is, well, solid gold. The UVA kicker who led his team in scoring the past two seasons led his team to a victory late last night. In the fourth quarter with the ball game tied, Sewell drops out to the right, scrambling, but he finds... Andrew Pierman, and he's able to get his foot into the end zone. That counts as a touchdown. The Cavs lead by six, but Gold misses the extra point after. The Cavs lead it 20 to 14. After a Jamil Sewell interception, the Blue Raiders back on the two-yard line. They punch it in. They make the PAT. Virginia now trails by one. So Virginia marches back down the field. Goal with the opportunity to make up for the missed point. From 32 yards out, it splits the uprights right down the middle. After the game, Gold says that kick was redemption. Now, we weren't going to lose on my account. Um, everybody out there on our team played so hard. I didn't want to go in the locker room and have to face the guys and look them in the eyes knowing that I missed the kick. It was awesome. Like, you know, a win is a win. And, and, and you know, they were a really good team. I, the best, best team with that record I've ever played. And, and I, I think uh, they got something going on here. So it was big to just fight and uh, not crack and, and dig in at the end. 
Well, the stakes were high for the Cavalier football team. Dave Strumpf joins us at the sports desk with more on tonight's big game. Hey, Dave. Hey, Haley. Well, the Cavaliers rode a five-game winning streak in today's homecoming showdown at Scott Stadium, and a big challenge lied in front of them. The Connecticut Huskies entered today one of only 11 undefeated Division I teams in the country. The Cavs would trail 6-0 early on, but would respond with two straight TDs. Jameel Sewell connects with John Phillips in the second quarter. The Cavaliers led 14-6 at the break, but Sewell would throw his second interception of the day, setting up this UConn score. The Huskies scored 10 in a row to take the 16 to 14 lead, but with three minutes and 20 seconds left in the game, the golden foot of Chris Gold hits a 19 yard field goal. The Cavaliers take the one point lead. Gold would miss a 35 yarder with 27 seconds left, but it wouldn't matter. The Cavalier defense holds the UConn offense to season lows in points, rushing yards, and total yards. The Hoos win seven. 17 to 16. It's the third time this year the Cavs have come from behind in the fourth quarter to take a victory. Cavaliers looking for a 3 0 start in the conference with a win today against Georgia Tech. The Ramblin' Rack panning down the doors first on third and long. Taylor Bennett connects with Demarius Thomas, a 56 yard pass, and Thomas finds end zone. Tech leads it 7 0, but the Cavaliers are in the hands of Jameel Sewell, and he answers. He finds the outside of the end zone on this run. The Cavs lead it. 14 to 7 in the first, but the defense puts some points up of their own today. Bennett drops back to pass, but it's deflected, bobbled around, and Jeffrey Fitzgerald comes up with the ball. He goes the rest of the field for the touchdown. It's 21 to 7. The Cavs hang on to beat Georgia Tech 28 to 23. It was all the players. They stepped up and made a lot of plays and uh, keeps us moving along. Uh, we certainly improved from last week. Uh, we've done that three weeks in a row, and uh, we might be a little bit better than most people gave us credit for. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's definitely exciting. I think people definitely doubted us after our first game against Wyoming. And, uh, you know, we came out there just we weren't ready to play. And uh, I think we've proved that, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're a big time team and we can, uh, you know, we can beat people. And, uh, you know, it feel, I mean, it definitely feels great to be a top of the ACC. And I, uh, I think we plan on, you know, trying to.